Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word and also the Forgiving Challenge. We are on day 28 and we're in that week that's called Restoration. Restoration. Just spoke about it yesterday um, in a detailed way of John chapter 9 within the message. But restoration is bringing something back to its original state. That God is actually restoring us in the relationship that we have before the fall. That God is restoring us in the righteousness that he gives to us in and through Christ. And exactly as Zach has put it on day 28, it's this incredible um, picture, this statement on page 183 that says, you are not valued by the mess that you made, but the but by the price that was paid. You are not valued by the mess that you made, but by the price that was paid. And so often we go back to being able to, especially within our sins and our past, and look to them and the stains. that We just don't think that the uh, crimson stain of blood has been washed white because how could it be? It was bad. It was a bad crimson stain. And we always like to go back and value our messes um, and being able to see, but we just understand that that mess is coming into a message that God, of God's restoration. You are not valued by the mess that you made, but by the price that was paid. The price that was paid was the life death on the cross that Jesus paid. You are so valuable to God that he sent his only son, Jesus, to live in this world, to die an innocent death. And then he rose victorious that next three days. You are so valued by God, important to God, that he wakes you up every single day and says to you, I love you so much that I was willing to give up my son for you. And that is, as the creator pronounces over you, here is truth. A lot of times you say, I'm not sure if that's really true. Can he love me? Can he forgive me? And this question, as we talked about yesterday a little bit, um, in the last couple of days, day 26 in particular, was that's a sin. <laughs> that's doubting. That is unbelieving truth. Because truth isn't how we deem it to be. Truth comes from God. And he has stated some incredible things throughout his word to be able to say to you, you are restored. Not because of the mess that you had, not because of the disciplines and obedience that you did through those messes, but because of the life, death, and resurrection of the Son, Jesus Christ, that was sent to do the work of God. And it is finished. Restoration is in part brought to you to be able to do the works of God, to be able to walk in faith. And it will continue on and it will be completed in the restoration of all things in that day. But until then, I pray that you can hear these words. I pray that you can receive the words and actually the challenge, which is a great challenge that God names you. What does God say about me? Rather than me looking in the mirror and say what I say about myself or looking into my past and letting that determine what people say about me or what I even say about myself. Let God name you in the challenge of being able to actually look up these verses. Um, and our verses really come into, um, as Zach was putting in the devotion, and one of these like little name uh, plate here is on page 187, is 1 Peter chapter 2. I want to read through 1 Peter chapter 2 with you and just dig a little bit deep into it of being able to talk about the living stone and the chosen people that God has actually pronounced to you. He, his truth is, this is my son, this is the payment that's going to be made, and these are the people that can receive that payment. A ransom. You have been ransomed. You have been restored by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 4, we're going to go through these 12 verses, um, or these 8 verses, ending in, in verse 12. But 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 4, it says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God, the living stone is Jesus, and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. I always love those just definite articles within the scriptures of being able to say, it's not that you might be built up if you get things together. No, it is saying that he has come, that the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, 
you also, like living stones, like the, the stones that have been grafted in, the stones that have been etched into the same cornerstone that built upon the work of of Christ. We're not doing the work of salvation, but Christ has done that. It says this, you also, like living stones, are being built. That might be, that should be, not if you do these things are being built, you know, are being built because of the foundation that we have of Christ. Are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God the only way that we can be acceptable to God isn't by our sinful nature, not by our sacrifices, not by um, our priesthood, but by and through, as it says here, Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you, as restored children of God, in building off of the cornerstone, being able to have it within that stonework, right? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. When you belong to God, when you belong to someone, they can do, just as we're talking about with the potter and its clay, and being able to say, I can name that, I can form and shape that, however I would please. And we are belonging to God. He has shaped and formed us, called us, enlightened us, actually invited us into his narrative, into his salvation through Jesus Christ. So people that are belonging to to God. He is our master. Name me for whatever you want to name me. And that's the challenge for today. Coming back to that. Hear what the truth of God's word has to say. A people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy through Christ. Dear friends, I urge you, as aliens and strangers in the world, to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. That they may glorify, <laughs> that they may see your good deeds and glorify God. You are a people belonging to God, and as we receive his restoration, we're doing the work of Christ that he has called us to do. And in and through us, we're going to have an impact on the people around us. But we pray with the good works, the good deeds of God, so that they too can see that and glorify God rather than just continue to walk in darkness. God's restorative work in us overflows, as we talked about yesterday, <laughs> to be able to have people ask questions around us, for us to have the opportunities to just proclaim truth, that we belong to God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. That is truth. That is something named upon you, put upon you by God. And we know that that's our reality. And may that reality bubble over and being able to know that through belonging to God, we live for God. And as we live for God and in his ways and in his joy and in his restoration, it has the impact of people around us. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day receiving the restorative work of God, but living out that restorative work as we walk by faith. Take care.